Now we're going to look at a different market structure. We're going to look at monopolies, and this is really the opposite of a perfectly competitive market or a competitive market. So here are the specification objectives. It looks like a lot, but um, it's not that much, actually. Here's a little recap of the differences between the two market structures. So we're very much going to be focusing on monopoly in this presentation. So a monopoly is where the, what, there is one firm in the industry. Now, this is what's called a pure monopoly. So the firm has 100% market share. In real life, it's it's not um, it's not so realistic um, we find far more examples of firms who have monopoly what we call monopoly power so that's where they have um, a high market share in the market and you know we can actually get quite worried about firms that have more than 25% market share so that's um, compared to 100% it, it seems quite small but actually uh, at about 25% market share we, we start to see firms being able to dom um, exert uh, monopoly uh, power and dominance. So the assumptions of the market are that there are high barriers to entry, meaning there's only one firm and they're very protected. Uh, the firm is the industry, the product are unique because there are no other competitors and they're price makers, meaning that they can set the price. So here was our diagram and uh, in the last presentation I said that the market price was determined by the interest rate of supply and demand. So this is the market price and this would be, I'm going to call it PC um, and QC for competitive market. Now monopoly, they are, as I said before, price makers, so they can set whatever price that they um, want. And what they're going to do, because the main objective of the firms is profit maximise, they're going to limit output. So they're going to set um, a higher price, and because of this higher price, the quantity, the equilibrium quantity is going to be much um, lower. So we're going to see a higher price here. This is usually... Um, what happened. So not so great for the customers because they're having to pay a higher price and there's some customers now that either can't afford it or maybe are looking uh, substitute products if there are any kind of substitute products out there. So it's not as allocatively efficient. Uh, it's not allocatively efficient in short uh, whereas the competitive market was and um, there's a smaller amount of people gaining um, this product. So sounds sounds pretty bad um, but the monopolist is doing that because they're going to make more profits than they would have if they'd have priced it at the competitive um, output. However, remember this diagram from when we were doing economies and diseconomies of scale? Um, it was all to do with the size of the firm. So we find that the um, increases in output in the long run can mean decreases in average cost as long as we're this side of the economies of scale or this side of the um, cost curve. Um, so say we've got small firms, because in a competitive market there'd be lots of small firms, they might have like quite high costs, so this is cost of like a competitive market, whereas a monopoly, because there's only one firm in the market, is likely to be a big firm, so they may be able to gain from economies of scale. Um, and we see that could be the cost of a monopoly. So it's not it's not always like a straight cut story that we can say, well, monopolies are going to charge a higher price. It might be that monopolies gain from economies of scale and they can actually charge a lower price. So here's a bit of a summary about the problems and benefits of monopolies. So typically they charge higher prices, so it'd be less um, allocatively um, efficient. There's less pressure to increase efficiency as well, so we're probably finding that they're less productively efficient as well. And we might find that the product quality is, is really poor because you know who cares where's the customer going to go they're not they're not going to be able to find a substitute product however the the monopoly may gain from economies of scale because they're operating on much larger scale much larger output than uh, the individual perfectly competitive firms are so they may be able to charge a lower price than in the competitive market and we know that they're making profits and they're making higher profits than they would do in a competitive market now if they reinvest these profits, they may be able to fund innovation, invention, research and development, making the production processes of the products themselves much more efficient. And this is what we call dynamic efficiencies. This is uh, just the word dynamic, meaning over time, efficiencies gained over time. So there are actually some benefits to being a monopoly. Okay, here's another important definition coming up, concentration ratio. And this is the market share held by the dominant firms in a market and we can have any number actually uh, here I've got five firm concentration ratio and this would just be the sum of the market shares of the top five firms 
Okay, I'm going to work out a three firm concentration ratio because I think it's more interesting with this data for the three firm concentration ratio. This is some old data from an old textbook that I found about the airline industry in the UK, um, 2002-2006. So if I look at a three firm concentration ratio from 2002, I'm just adding up these and these add up to 82, I believe. I hope my maths is right. And then if we compare it to the concentration ratio in 2006, still using a three firm concentration ratio, this should add up to 76. Um, so what we can see is actually the market is becoming less concentrated in the top three firms. And it's it's mainly because um, British Airways has lost quite a big market share. Ryanair has actually gained a big market share, but we're seeing um, smaller players enter the market. Uh, Jet2.com, Fly Globe Span um, in 2006 at that point. We're seeing EasyJet gain market share as well and uh, Monarch. Um, so when we have concentration ratios, when it, it's decreasing, it's suggesting that the market's getting a little bit more competitive. Um, and the higher the, the concentration ratio, um, the less competitive it suggests the market is. So you should have been able to cover all of those specification objectives for this video.